Oh, yes. Welcome, my dear Fliptopians. It feels like it's been a long time. As you can see, the setup is temporarily changed because I realized through sheer practicality and me fucking up things last second to just use another program called StreamYard would be the most appropriate when we speak to the one and only UG Rose. Now, the thing is, remember, I know it's, it's very, very normal for me to hop between time zones all the time, being the multidimensional flip lord here, uh, I have to remind myself that we have individuals in other time zones and where UG is at the moment, it's really early. So she's gonna be a few minutes late, but in the meantime, how y'all doing? What's going on y'all? You doing good today? You feeling all right? I hope, the, hold on, is the audio okay? Do I sound okay? We got music in the back. I'm gonna lower it just a tiny little bit like that. And then after this, we have obviously a multidimensional <coughs> age of Aquarius <coughs> birthday party because it's my motherfucking birthday. Technically, my birthday was yesterday, but being multidimensional, I've said that a few times already. My birthday spans over a few days in Earth time. Does that make sense, y'all? Thank you, everybody, for the birthday wishes. It's been a while since I've been on a stream. I know. Y'all probably miss me. Who missed me here? I know. I know. And the reason is because it was my birthday yesterday. But also, I've been working really hard on a specific few projects. I got a few going on right now. One of them being... A potential diss track, a new song that breaks genre barriers, music video visual barriers, and another barrier that I'm going to break is your mama. But on top of that, we have another project in line, and that is the one and only Flip Club opening is going to happen sometime in the next few weeks. Unfortunately, we won't be able to unveil the new flip club tonight but within the next few weeks we're gonna see an entirely new set an entirely new business baby stay stay away from my mama see this oop that's not it thank you very much lumpy happy revolving mm -hmm. uh now we can actually highlight dina now stay away from my mama leave my mama alone can't wait for it that's right flip club three oop Ah oh, man, the chat's going so fast. I'm highlighting the wrong things, baby. Oh my God, so exciting. I know. Maybe I should put on these headphones so I know what the hell's playing in the background, man. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the age of Aquarius, UG Rose being a specialist in all things metaphysical and um, spiritual and astrological. She can explain this whole shift of energies in the new world way better than I can. I'm just here to look good, baby. I'm just here to like smack it. Upgrading the upgrades indeed. That's right, Angela. So um, in the meantime, I think we are now in Aquarius moon. And before I get too deep into it, it means that everything's flipping up, aka this new gift that I got. Check this out, bruh. Look what I got. Look at this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? 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 Here we go. <sighs> You can't even see the glowing. I was, when I blew on it, it's pink now, but you can't even see the color pink on it. So that was completely redundant, completely unnecessary. But I realized as of my birthday that I think I have a favorite animal. I never thought about it, but if I had to choose a favorite animal, it's probably a flamingo. Go figure. Pierre XO enjoys flamingos. The most awkwardly flamboyant feminine yet strange bird out there have you guys seen the mating dances that flamingos do they get all like their posture gets all high and they do this they start like tap dancing like this and i'm like fuck i do that at the club I already do that at the club during the mating rituals, guys. Every time I walk into the club, especially if Richard's around, my posture gets really straight. 
and boom, laser eyes. You know what I mean? Who's going to be my wifey tonight? Which one? Who? 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 And boom, the whole dance floor comes circling around the pink flamingo that is moi. They made the tango music, indeed. I, I read the the male feeds the babies, um, and the milk is red. That's that's really uncomfortable to know about, but I I guess that's a good thing. I've been trying to be more spiritual one with my third eye. Yes, indeed. Me too. Me too. Uh, uh, flamingos are the little clamp of birds. <laughs> This is why I missed Fliptopia, guys. I did not forget about you, and I'm not abandoning you. I've been working on quite possibly one of the most ambitious projects that I've fucking done in a long time. I can't wait to show you guys these things. It's going to be in the next two weeks. We're going to drop a shit ton of things, man. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Paulo's in the room saying, yep, you got it. You got to love yourself, right? Appreciate the flamingos that you are, baby. They're cool looking. I saw them at the San Diego Zoo. Then I wanted to run around and release all the animals. Dude, sexiest bird. The sexiest bird next to the peacock. You know what I mean? Look at the feminine. Sh like, look at the shade. SF. Motherfucker goes. Guys, do you know what is? Does anybody know? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Other than SF. SF is FS. FS. SF is probably more cultured than I am with my own culture, but that's a hint. Do you guys know what this means? It actually means go fuck yourself. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. That's, that's not it. Uh, let me. Yuji, take your time. Get ready. Um, I'm just introing Fliptopia right now. So do what you got to do and I'll bring you onto the stream yard whenever you're ready. Nobody knows what Chukmong Nam Okay, guys, can we throw some roses for Zaya? The roses grew on Zaya's avatar pick. Is that what you've been up to? You've been tending to your garden, growing the flowers. I've been waiting. Where the hell have you been, Zaya? Excuse me. We got Glamour. We got everybody in the room right now. So Chukmong Nam means go flip yourself. No, Chukmong Nam means happy new year. Is that? Wait, hold on. Is it Happy New Year? I don't even fucking know what that means in my own language. I just know that you say that during Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year, or whatever New Year you want to call it. But there's an Eastern New Year, Lunar New Year, that happens every February, and the dates kind of shift around. And as of yesterday, the Lunar New Year landed exactly on my birthday. And I still don't know what Jokmung Namoy is. I just know that I had to say that as a kid every lunar new year so i just assumed oops i assumed that it means happy new year so i'm not trying to say i'm gonna take over the world this year but it's highly likely that something like that might happen especially with these coming projects i'm gonna be the walt fucking disney of virtual reality in the digital cyber dystopian space man i know you're gonna be like walt disney wasn't a great dude nobody was Nobody ever was, except me. If you think I'm flexing a lot today, it's because it's my birthday yesterday. If there's a day that's appropriate for me to do that, then it is that it is that it is that it is. You know what I mean? You know more French than Vietnamese. I probably do. I should probably retouch, uh, get in contact with my roots. I can't even fucking say that. Like, I, I don't even know where to start with that. Mm, yum, yum, yum. So what have you guys been up to this last week? Anything? Oh, wait. Lockdowns allow us not to do shit. So sort of good news. Um, the Czech Republic is no longer in the state of emergency, but apparently that absolutely changes nothing. So everything is still under lockdown. <laughs> sort of good news on my end, I guess. Hello, Lily Lauren. Everybody's here today. I can't wait for the after party as well. It's going to be a grand old god dang time. You survived a birthday, I see. Happy belated birthday. Guess what I did? Guess what I did on my birthday? Uh, do you know more Czech now? I know a few Czech people. <laughs> oh, shit. Thank you, Alisa. Um, I do want to shout out uh, a few people that gave me donations yesterday, uh, unknowingly, not on the stream, obviously. Uh, but I don't know if I should do it now because I don't think they're here. 
Let's do it maybe during the after party when I see them. But there were some crazy fucking amounts going through fucking yesterday. I shot myself, dropped to my knees, and ripped out my esophagus and tied a bow tie to keep my shirt together. I bet your Vietnamese is pretty good, but you don't want to set too high expectations. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm a polyglot. Polyglot? I'm poly sexy, dude. Uh, body shots off yourself. It was just me and Richard, and we took body shots off each other. No, that's all. That's basically, I just went to Richard's place with a few, like maybe two other friends, and then we just ate sushi. We ordered so much flipping sushi. Dude, I'm still finishing the sushi today. It was enough sushi for two meals for two days. So that's four meals in all. That was a lot of fucking sushi, man. Probably probably five meals of sushi. That's how I want to celebrate my birthday. I'm getting fucking old, dude. And I'm doing old people things. Dinner parties? Leave at midnight? Take maybe just three glasses of a cocktail? Gin and tonic, please. Wake up feeling semi-shitty. Brie, dude, the good news is I survived 27. As a musician, as an artist, you get past 27, it's either the end of your life or the end of your career. <laughs> and I'm still doing pretty well on both ends. I'm still alive and the career is doing all right, if you want to call it that. You know what I mean? Still surrounded by sexy people. We even got Mary up here. Oh, thanks, Mary. I wanted to shout you out. I haven't seen you here in a while either. You just call me old. Man. Whatever, dude. I got coffee. I got a good day here. <clears throat> yeah, you didn't join. You didn't join that club. So well done. Guys, can I get an applause for not dying, dude? <laughs> um, I'm kidding. I know. I know you're kidding, Mary. It's okay. It's okay. Um. I'd love to celebrate with you and Richard. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> I said the same before hitting 28. Wait, if that's you in the profile picture, how the hell are you 28? You, you, you look young as hell. ID, please. ID, please. Where is UG? I think UG is still getting ready because of time zone differences. And uh, it happens, you know. Luckily, I'm a professional now. I keep y'all entertained with my stupid ass face in the meantime. We waiting for Yuji to come through. I hope she comes soon, though, because I can only be entertained for so long. What I do on my birthday. Dude, triple flip, quadruple flip, hung out at Richard's, ate some sushi, burnt some hookah. Like, literally, it burnt and didn't taste too good at a certain point, but it was still fun. Uh... It's still noon in NYC. Yo, man, what ha what time has everybody been wake waking up around these times? I've been waking up today. Today I woke up at 1 o'clock. 12 or 1 o'clock. I woke up really late. You know why? Because I'm a fucking rock star. <laughs> Sounds like a chill day. Yes, indeed. But, man... I really want to show y'all clips of this new video. I finished the mute. By the way, we're not going to cover too much donk show right now. If there are donk show people, let's save it for the after party. But don't worry. I got I, I got some stuff for y'all. I got some stuff for y'all. And a few days ago, I shot the entire video, came home around 7 o'clock, edited until almost 4.30 in the fucking morning, bruh. Finished the whole thing almost. Did some final touches here and there. And I the thing is, I don't want to give any hints of what is there. Because this is the strategy in the art of war, you see. I can't give out too much. Otherwise, the enemy will know my position. I got to keep it. I got to keep it. Rock star shit. That's right, shark boy. Bonk show, bonk bonk. Um, well, that was a dong show, bonk show, dong show, and bonk shows. Will you do summer streams outside again? I miss those. Listen, guys, with that summer streams, 
It's completely out of my abilities. I can't control the weather. I can't control the government. I can't control the virus. The only thing I can control is you, baby. <laughs> Sometimes you got to keep it zip. The, mo oh, the most scorpion statement has ever been said. Listen, this whole feud or whatever has really allowed me to express my inner Scorpio moon, which UG Rose should be able to give us a, fr a, a few, a few pieces of information about that. Thank you very much, Shadows Cat. Oh my God, 50. Thank you. Happy birthday, Pierre. Fun fact. And my brother had the same birthday. Hugs for all of Fliptopia. Thank you. And before I move on, could we get a ton of lemons and roses for the one and only UG Rose? Hi. Hello, yeah. hello. Can you How hear me? How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy Lunar New Year to everybody. Pia, I just realized this year your birthday fell on the Lunar New Year. Yes, I, I learned about that recently too, and I just told everybody here as well. Um, very, very coincidental, I think. Mm-hmm, right, exactly. Very much um, embracing your Scorpio moon is renewal, transformation. How does it feel being one year older, one year closer to being that that old philosopher you have down in you. <laughs> you know what's funny? It's it's probably it, an easier transition than I've had years before. Like before each birthday was actually way more intense. This one was like, oh, I don't have to like try standing on the wave. I can just chill in a yacht now. Mm -hmm. you know? Be on a boat. <laughs> yes, yes. Eugene, um, can you quickly try maybe moving the mic a bit more in Am front I of you? Am I it's, not um, loud enough? It, it, anybody in the chat, can you confirm if UG's voice is coming out from one speaker? I can only hear it from my left speaker, so I don't know if you have a stereo mic or... Probably. Let me see if I can change. Is that better? Okay, okay, hold on. I got a little bit of a thing here. Just give me one second. I, mm -hmm. Apparently, I have an echo. Okay, okay. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? You can still hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Um, Is that it's still here? Okay, so... Yeah, you have... You're coming out of only one speaker. Uh, I don't know hmm. if there's an... Let's see if that is there any better I'm trying to figure out i'm so terrible with this audio interface it's not even funny <laughs> can you bring the interface closer to the camera maybe i can figure it out <laughs> <laughs> live sound check people here we go <laughs> this is what i have a danger Let me that close. Okay, the you see the, the button that says stereo and mono? Mm-hmm. Can you click that? Yeah. That's what I had down before. Hello? Is that better? Mm, let me see it again. Mm-hmm. Uh... Weird. Okay. Where is Pearl um, up? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, let me see. Move it up real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where it says, all oh, the gain. Okay. Okay. All right. It's okay. We can we can just go for it. We sound like we're in outer space. <laughs> I sound like it in my headphones. Okay. I think it's I think it's okay. Um, mm. Is everybody here okay if we just move on? Well, we don't have a choice, so let's just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that this is not like bothering anybody's ears in my chat. I really got to get this figured out. I don't know what what's going on right now. It sounds crazy. Okay, it says, Pierre, I have a wicked echo. See? Um... Okay, let me hop out real quick and check my StreamYard settings, because maybe that might be it too. Hold on, it might be me. Give me one second. 
Thanks, guys, for being patient. Just one second. Right. Y'all. Thank you all. Oh, here we go. I just hit echo cancellation in my StreamYard settings. Any better? Any better? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes. I don't hear an echo. Okay. And also yours is better without the echo cancellation now too. Okay. Or with it, with it. Um, with the echo cancellation? Can you say something real quick? Hello? Okay. Ah, uh, much better. better. Boom, baby. Much better. <laughs> We're Oh my God, how smooth are we? We just busted that out of five Ow. minutes. That's troubleshooting real time. No producers on deck. Damn. Okay. All right. So, Yuji, I'm um, yes, sorry for uh, unexpectedly waking you up so early, but I hope you're doing all right. <laughs> I'm good. I've been up since six o'clock this morning, like freaking out. Like, I couldn't find the top that goes under the top that I have on. So, like, why is I'm trying to get on the camera? Strap just said pop. I'm like, <gasps> no. <laughs> You didn't want to have a Janet Jackson Super Bowl moment on your live stream. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely get me demonetized, but, you know, maybe yeah. another platform another day. Right. Uh, you know, I'll say that for the OnlyFans. You know? <laughs> I was going to mention it. I didn't want to bring it out, but, you know. So, usually we can definitely go a bit over time today. Um, but, okay. um, all right. So, where do we start? It's the age of Aquarius, and I only know so much about this. You are a well-versed veteran. And this oh, yeah. whole thing, you got notes for days. Okay. <laughs> okay. Damn. All right. So well, let's start off with something simple. Mm-hmm. In a few sentences, two sentences, three sentences, what does it mean, the age of Aquarius? So theories around the age of Aquarius basically center around um, a, a, a revolution as far as how humanity is thinking. Um, whether around ideas about community, about uh, communication, a lot of the comms, communication, community, cooperation, everything is becoming clearer that at least uh, for right now, because Saturn, the planet of lessons and boundaries and whatnot, is now moving through earth signs, um, air signs after coming out of earth signs. um, It's kind of like we're trying to restructure how we're thinking about how we live. And how we're speaking to each other about how we live. Yeah, I can already see that happening a hundred percent. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, in the the span of how long society's been around, it's literally overnight. Like one year in yeah. the span of hundreds of years is overnight. Everything leapfrog. Changed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, yes. Have you personally noticed like any changes with just because I, from the time that I started watching up until now, I've noticed a. Uh, wonderful maturation in how you just present yourself, your comfort, your comfort with your style, your acceptance of the fact that some people are just going to throw shade and you're not going to pander to the people that throw shade, but you're just going to stick to having fun because you're primarily doing this for you. It is about your need to reach out to people. Have you found that happen more Uh, often? A hundred percent. Like, I think you've been around long enough to see like these very almost obvious and intensive changes like i feel like throughout my life i've experienced these things at a at a roller coaster pace from what i've seen at others and it's not the most fun roller coaster at times but mm-hmm. it definitely <laughs> like you've been around to see these really key landmark events that have happened and i'm sure there's there's a good amount in the chat who has been with me for four years, years. and like mm-hmm. i mean talk about ultimate change and transformation like god i don't even know where to start with that absolutely absolutely it's been it's been cool to see it has been really great to see just that you i think you also what i see in your 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 growth is a huge realization that community is very important in shaping who you were presenting yourself to be so right. you notice that in california you were expected to be like california version of pierre like I have to be with the the trends and the bull crap and the the facade and go along to get along because without it, then you've already experienced the extremes of being outside of being an it person, mm-hmm. and found a way to keep like maintain your personality within that and keep your quirks and the things that you like about you, no matter how it's been judged by other people. But now since you've moved to Prague, you see again, it's like more like. 
I don't have to worry about who knows me from where online because in this environment, I'm going to be me. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, the thing with California that I was always experimenting with, like how far I can just push that eccentric individuality there. But it was it's such a fragmented society that if you completely isolate yourself in that way, like you have no hope. Like there's good. It's a good luck surviving in that situation Mm -hmm. where, you know, even just architecturally and geographically out here, I could be really weird, but still enjoy the city for what it is. I'm not so reliant on the fabric of how people interact with each other in order to just be who I need to be. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Because so much of your, I had a conversation with a couple of uh, friends yesterday because I'm doing something tomorrow um, in a private group. And something that came up was that we don't, when we not what we think and we, we we're, we're not who we think we are and we're not who other people think we are. We are who other people think we are. Okay. So because we're trying to control how people think of us, mm-hmm. we present a certain way or show up a certain way in society just because we want people to accept their version of who we are. Yes. And I think California has that mentality on steroids. Like they birthed <laughs> not only social media, but they birthed influencers, like the first influencers. And we looked at it as like a species that came to be. It right. started in California. And the, the only origin. thing that, yeah, the whole idea of it is controlling how other people view you. So mm-hmm. you have that mentality of everybody consistently trying to control others' perceptions of who they are as a person. Absolutely, absolutely. And to see to that point right there, this actually touches on something that I, I think we discussed or I presented to you while we were planning this whole thing was that you know how like they have the tree of life, right? They have the tree of life that's above ground and you'll see some illustration where it's above ground and then another tree is growing downward underneath ground. And I kind of look at that symbology as there's a certain, like if humanity was one big tree, we're mm-hmm. all like our own individual little branch of mm-hmm. humanity. We are, we have our own little thing, our own little way of life, our own customs and whatever. And it's like, if you want the fruit of something like a pineapple that has a really hard outer, uh, outer casing, you have to get into the inside to get to the soft fruit. So the tree of life is basically we're the fruit of the tree of life. Okay. And based on how much of the external expectations we shed, is going to basically encourage like the inner fruit to come out, our nice side, our soft sides, our cooperative sides, like our humanity. So we're continually kind of shedding layers of who other people think we should be to finally become who we are. And I've seen that kind of like we just with you, like a little bit of like, okay, I, I don't need to do this. I don't got to do that because I'm creating the world for myself right. so that who's in here can come out instead of having to hide. Sure, sure. Yeah, it, that's that's a great metaphor. I'll I'll t- take it a step further too. It's like you know you're trying to constantly grow in a garden with really terrible soil, and mm-hmm. no matter how many try tries you try to water it a certain amount of time, you shift the location of it. You maybe you want to plant it differently. I don't know how gardening works. I'm just <laughs> bullshitting. But like, right. eventually you're like, okay, maybe this specific seed has to just grow in another location with different climate different you know structures at all and that's kind of like fliptopia man you know and as more as this thing solidified and seeing meeting people like you obviously richard as well and everybody here in the chat it's allowed i think a lot of others including myself to really kind of learn and be who you know you truly are as a person Right. It was with roses as a huge symbol in, in the community, it, you get to bloom. You get yeah, to, instead of right. staying, staying closed, you actually get to expose yourself. And that's like when a flower is most valuable is when it finally blooms or most loved is when it blooms. So, yeah. So you put yourself in different soil and look at you now, boo. Look at you now. <laughs> the, the most Aquarius stereotype that had ever existed. <laughs> 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 but it's wonderful that you think about yourself again yes, as, as fruit. Like, look, I'm not, I'm not growing here the way that I want to. So I'm going to take me and I'm going to go somewhere where I can grow. Right. So um, to go back to the, the astrological ages. So we were in the age of Pisces, right? Mm-hmm. And then 
came the age of Aquarius. So what's like the the big differences between the time of before until now? Like, wh how do you explain the age of Pisces and stuff? Uh, the age of Pisces was a little because the thing is that I think that manifestations of ages have, uh, rely on a little bit on when a planet was discovered because mm -hmm. traditionally the planet that ruled Pisces was Jupiter, and Jupiter is also the co-ruler of uh, Sagittarius, which is all philosophy and whatnot. And I think that in the age of uh, in the ages, we find that we're either um, we're either ascending to the higher. Uh, causes or the positives of a sign, or we're moving toward a negative. So the positives of Pisces are we are adaptable, we're changeable, we're able to, um, we have a, a feel of selflessness. There's a big sense of like higher consciousness and just understanding that we are animated by something that we just can't explain and we should be catering to that. Um, but what we saw, especially toward the tail end of the, the age of Pisces would be the opposite of that, where people are so movable and changeable, mutable, that they can totally erase what they feel and go against it just to go with the crowd, which is to Richard's point, everybody like wet noodles. No one has any fortitude. Um, mm -hmm, right. Fish. Mm -hmm, right. So everybody wants to be a dead fish just going with the flow. And that's a lot of what we, what we saw trending in the end of 2020, 2019, you saw like this progression toward not thinking about, you know, spiritual things and this a, a, a negation of it. We saw a negation of boundaries. Oh, you should just accept people the way that they are. And we should just love everybody. No, sometimes you can't, you can love people, but you kind of maybe have to do it over there because yeah. up close, it's too close. <laughs> I had to learn that the hard way as well. Right. You know? <laughs> It's funny because remember that whole hype at 2012 being the end of the world with the Mayan calendar? Yes. And that was the start of the new age. But like when that happened, everyone's like, oh, we're still here. It's fine. But after this year, you look back at 2012 and I think most people would agree, oh, that's kind of when things started changing, actually. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Like we think about it in literal terms, but the changing of ages actually really has to do with sorry, actually has a lot to do with just the ideas that are prevalent in humanity and society. So we're looking right. for like physical changes and people mutating and becoming mighty morphin power ranger, X-Men, ninja, whatever. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. waiting for powers and stuff. And it's like, no, it doesn't necessarily work like that. Being revolutionary is something as little as spreading an idea and letting that idea gain legs and actually like manifest as a way of being in the world. So like yeah. you, to your point, yeah, 2012, bad people were like, oh, this is weird. and But now all of a sudden it went from being weird in here to it's weird out there. Like what the hell is going on outside? <laughs> we like merged. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aquarius is known to be the revolutionary sign, right? Um, I know you got a lot of notes. So I'm curious, <laughs> I'm curious out there. So if you want to take over and just like lay out whatever you want to bring up, like go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so basically I, I didn't, I'm, I didn't pull out the, the, the tarot cards. They're away. I'm not going to, okay. I'm not going to go down to a that. hole. Yeah. It's a whole rabbit hole. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but, um, but if you, but people can look up the imagery of the traditional rider weight, um, on their own, but Aquarians, um, the, the card period in tarot actually represents, um, hope. It's a star card. Um, and it actually, the figure that's on it, it looks like a young, uh, a young woman, but it's actually a young man <laughs> pouring water not only into a river but also on the land, and yes. that made me think back to something that you said in a previous podcast with Richard, where you were explaining to um, another young um, artist that was in the chat that exactly that those scales that right evenly pouring right yep. <laughs> exactly. And so that's a wonderful tattoo actually. When I saw it, I'm like he's Thank like you. <laughs> <laughs> he's like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like with the age of Aquarius, there, there's a, there's like a, a, a little bit of a, a duality that we're coming to the realization that we need to have logically because like, okay, well, I, I know that I, I don't know how I'm animated. I don't know how my flesh is, my flesh suit is moving around. Maybe we should give a little bit of credence to the fact that there's something that feeds that spark. There's something that feeds your, your will to live. And you have to keep feeding that, especially as an artist, because without that, that's like that—that that is like the wellspring that artists pull from to mm -hmm. be creative. 
is feeding your spirit. And mm-hmm. that's why I see that since you moved, yeah, you were creative in California, but like Pierre in Prague is like hyper creative. Like all you have to do is create and yes. you're, and you're living off of it. Yes. Um, to me, the representation of pouring the water on both land and in the water is water usually in, in tarot represents soul and spirit. So you have to continue to pour water on the land, meaning your physical things as to your point, you have to keep as an artist, you have to keep your feet in two ponds. One that is feeding your spirit, one that's paying the bills. Um, yes, yes, yes. Because you do have real world needs. You can't say, well, I'm just going to exist on love and inspiration and I need no food, no water. I'll just lay in the street. <laughs> Orange County, for sure. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> there are there are their whole communities of people who are just like starving artists out in the street. Like, okay, y'all want to do, well, that was hippies pretty much. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, you know, and there were whole like hippie communes where all they did was just art and drugs and, yeah. you know. <laughs> reading that. So the Aquarius is known as the water bearer. So I, obviously when I first learned about it, I was like, I thought, so doesn't that mean Aquarius is a water sign? And I was like, no, <laughs> it's an air sign, but it's not that they are water. They hold water, meaning that uh water being symbology of uh emotions and spirit, and spirit. And mm-hmm. being able to maneuver it and contain it and then pour it it's not that they are that but they know how to like utilize it and when the water is pouring it is also symbolic of a flood so for example when i look at the idea of revolution and the birth of new life or whatever it's like this place has a desert And people can't do anything and people are, you know, starving. There's no nutrients or anything. But when there's a flood, not only will it entirely destroy the place, but it finally provides it water for a new civilization to happen. Absolutely. Did you know that there's a neighborhood that I think, uh, I don't I was going to say specifically where it is, but there's a neighborhood out here Mm in Prague. And apparently it was not a nice neighborhood it was the dangerous neighborhood and it wasn't well kept and it just wasn't a good place that you would want to visit a mm-hmm. flood happened 15 years ago something like that and now it's like an entirely different neighborhood that's like a business corporate center that has probably the most money out of all the other neighborhoods out here really so it's wow. a literal, literal flood that came through destroyed the 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 city or that neighborhood and then now it's a completely new one that's thriving more than it ever has that's a wonderful metaphor for it absolutely yeah. right. right just like okay well, sometimes it does take a it does take a literal flood of of ideas it takes a flood of new energy to mm-hmm. finally change the landscape of an area and take it from the 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 depths of being ghetto wise to actually mm-hmm. being like a thriving center where people can benefit off of its development very Aquarian, so Aquarian. <laughs> and I mean, th- that could directly point to what everybody's going through now, where it's like we've been t- trudging through this desert of like the spiritual desert of doing these routines in a place that has no trees and no spirit, no soul. And as of this crazy world event, it's like everybody just got water poured onto them and some people drowned. Some people are drowning way more than some. Some people are thriving in the, the flood. People know how to swim, you know. They're like, well, maybe mm-hmm. their boat that they've been saving up. Right. But, I'm uh, so sorry for that background noise. It's the ambulance passing. <laughs> City <okay>. noise. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like now water got entirely smashed on our culture. And now we have to figure out what to do after the flood or during the flood, actually. Right. So would you say, because that, that metaphor is wonderful. So would you say that if it really is depending on how a person thinks or how a person has been thinking in the past that determines whether or not it's a little splash on the face because you've already been doing a lot of the internal work so that you're showing up in reality as a person who is balanced and rational and able to communicate and understands that you know that it, there are other people on the planet, right? <laughs> Um, as opposed to, I guess, for someone who did not want to realize that this is like waterboarding to them. And some, it, and some people are feeling that way. Actual waterboarding, right? So some mm-hmm. people that aren't- It's like cut- a little sprinkle and you're good. 
But some yeah. people, it's like a bucket to the face with a towel on your face. Yeah, so is this we're completely speaking through metaphors? Like, let's just keep going with it. Like, <laughs> it's like, okay, you get water dribbled on you with no mask, and it's just like, ah. Uh, but if you had a mask, meaning a cloth over your mouth, and the water gets through that, you know what I mean? It feels You're like choking. Right? You're so, choking and gagging and mm-hmm. Yeah. And the people that live life through a metaphorical mask, the water is waterboarding them, and the people that don't have the mask aren't suffocating. Come on, Pete. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you got me. There <laughs> you go. About... <laughs> nice. Absolutely. Right. right. So exactly. So it is the water bearer, which in in um in astrology, uh we call it it's I think it's an actual constellation called Ganymede. And um in mythology, Ganymede was a young boy who, because he was so beautiful, hmm, <laughs> the god, the gods came, or Zeus came in the form of an eagle, and what is on the United States flag and money or whatever. But an eagle came and took Ganymede, or Zeus in eagle form came and kidnapped Ganymede and took him up to the heavens to Mount Olympus to be his water bearer and lover. Even though he was a child. Okay. Well, that happened a lot in that time. Those days. That was kind of prevalent. <laughs> okay. Then, then what happens from there? So from there, it's funny because Ganymede is actually another uh, a relative, like a great, great cousin of Helen of Troy. For some reason, the gods love messing with the, 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 the that, that bloodline because, you know, Helen, you know, caused the whole Trojan War. Okay. Um, the face that launched a thousand ships, but um, in a series, you'd actually notice that the tarot card. Now I'm really feeling like I should get my tarot cards because you can actually see that there's a progression from uh, the devil card yeah. to this to to the sun uh, to the star card to the sun card and the moon card and the moon card. Shout out to Richard as a Piscean is the Piscean card, um, but there's a there's a particular. Um, animal that is in the star card uh, some type of little bird again to represent the eagle um mm-hmm. saying that you know that there is something higher there is something that has a higher vantage point that is kind of coming down into our physical reality and trying to like and, and, and basically maybe offsetting us or coming and taking from us something that we really need and something that I see feel was prevalent last year and is still now is that the higher ups, are coming down to we where the people are and they're, messing with us. <laughs> money, they're the eagle. They're on the bill, and they're the ones that are pulling up the the people that could possibly provide a better change. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. I see. Huh, fascinating. Right. right. So there's so there's that little bit, and then um right. So it's in this star. The star card is also after the tower, which I thought was pretty um was was pr- even more of an embodiment of like hope because after the tower, it's like okay, well. To your point that you made before, we already knew that our pace of life before all of this was going to run us ragged. So now it's like everything has been built on shaky foundations. Everybody was tired. Everybody is frustrated. F this person. F that person. F all people. I don't like people. That was a sentiment. To now it's, wait a minute, we have to stick together. Yes. What about our humanity? We have to share. We have to focus on our shared humanity. Right. So. It's like we knew that the way that we were going before was going to lead to a point of breakdown or a point of excess. And now that everything is toppled, uh, the ideas that we're developing now are actually helping us to realize how much we were like bound to yes. collapse. You, you know, it, it's funny because like me and Richard talk about it all the time. And I'm sure everyone has thought this too. But as years before a decade or so ago it didn't feel like we were necessarily bound by something but it, it, we were just going through emotions and stuff and now having that this lockdown for almost a year or so we're technically more bound than ever but you you start reflecting about the times before then and you start seeing the things that were actually constraining us day to day and i didn't i mean i didn't even realize it until now too just having this time to think and reflect on it's like, wait a minute, we were doing some just really thoughtless shit for years, decades at a time. 
even you, you experienced burnout in the in yeah. the past two years. And you're like, you know what? It's just it's too much right now. I need a break. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I had to learn the hard way, but um, I'm definitely I definitely know my limits because of that. Hmm. Which is a wonderful another wonderful point to segue into another point that I um got that um so part of what happens with Aquarius is that um on the whole tree of life um, metaphor thing going back to that that they're they're a ruler of particularly the eleventh house. I don't want to go into the partic- particular name of each branch because it's a little difficult. So I'm just gonna instead of going to the tree, the ruler of the eleventh house is actually speaking of friendship and concepts of the father. So mm. lemon daddy, there you go. There's you again. <laughs> um, but um, it's a it's a combination of Saturn and Uranus, which is the sky god, which is air, and that's Zeus, and um, the grandfather of Zeus, which is Kronos. So as you said, that it's an understanding of that you hit a limit. Yes. Saturn is boundaries. So you kind of went to, you let your mind, you let your creativity, you let your emotions take you to as far as you could go before you realize, now that I've hit that wall, maybe it's time to pull it back a little bit. And I think that as a collective, we're all like, you, like we said when we, in the, the group chat that we had uh, the other day, was that we have had opportunity to go to our limits, but then what happens when we stay at our limits? What happens right. when we keep pushing and pushing and pushing when clearly it's time for us to stop and reevaluate how we're approaching our day-to-day life? Yes. You know, as terrible as this lockdown situation really is, and I mean, as terrible as it is for a lot of people, um, I've seen a lot of positive benefits in my life because it's made me reflect on the sheer amount of options and I think freedom is the wrong word, but excess before then that allowed me to continuously burn myself out because, you know, you have that FOMO, fear of missing out thing. You feel like you always got to be doing something because everyone's doing something and then you're like, oh, I got to be successful. I have all this time and I got to work. So I almost was like restricting myself towards this chase to something because of the options just being there before Mm -hmm. where now the lockdowns have allowed me to understand and boundary myself impose a boundary on myself of how far my limit really is and i haven't really slowed down until this time period exactly so it's like okay you you tested your efficiency you tested your strength you tested your will but now it's like okay i maybe it's not good that i run my will to the point where i don't even want to use it anymore because i'm so tired exactly Exactly. and the paradox of choice Perfect. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, put it in a more under, like really simple analogy. Uh, I think there was this actual some study said like when we have two or three choices of cereal at a supermarket, it's easy to choose. But when there's over ten different cereals, it starts breeding anxiety. <laughs> and like in my own life, it's like before this whole thing happened, it was just for like, fuck, what opportunity could I go now? Maybe I should go here. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should change this and this and this. And maybe I should go out and this. And maybe I got a free time. It was like mm-hmm. this anxiety of just the paradox and the excess of choice every single day where now it's, like, it's cold as fuck outside and, and there's a lockdown. So just, and I've actually been a little less anxious because of that. Right. Just because you're like, well, I'm going to keep my, I'm going to, I'm going to plan my day around what I'm able to do as opposed right. to what I feel anxiety that I won't get to do. There you go. Yes. Yes, exactly. Right. So you're, so you're much more self-governed. Yes. Yes. And that's the limit, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Ultimately it's, it's, if you really want, if you really want freedom, what more, what greater freedom is there than to say, well, I know exactly how much I want. So I don't wind up too full and sick and I'm not starving. Yes. And because we're talking about Aquarius, I'm going to tie it into that. So Aquarius Mm -hmm. are known for their almost irresponsible love for freedom. (laughs) (laughs) And looking back at my life, like I'm way more reserved now compared to my old, my old early 20 rock star days, you know? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Your days of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. (laughs) That was an excess of freedom that became a prison on its own. You know, you hear that saying a lot, but like 
tra chasing ultimate freedom with no responsibility and no boundaries is just as terrible as being locked down with no options at all. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So like you. So almost like don't. So don't. In 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 looking or in keeping with that, you feel more of a friend to yourself, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So so it's so this is an opportunity as a collective for us to realize, hey, maybe I need to be a little bit more kind to myself. And in being kind by myself to myself, maybe that might mean that I have to make some different choices and just learn to be OK with my choices. Sure. I mean, I mean, if you had a kid or just a close friend, would you just let your kid like sex, drugs and rock and roll? You know, you got to sometimes treat yourself like that. Like <laughs> you don't want to just throw yourself in those situations all the time, too. You got to take care of you like you would take care of somebody that you know really well, you know? Yes. Yes. To what your point again, you have with the, with Aquarian, some of the most prevalent themes are insight and consciousness, healing, which is the water um, and thoughts on idealism, whether it's social or conscious. So as a collective, we're looking at, well, what's good for me? What is enough for me? As opposed to looking at my excess and you can add sometimes, would you even feel that you put yourself in spaces of lack because you were overwhelmed by how many choices you could have? Like you felt well, like you're missing out because you have so much and you're not choosing yet. The question is if I did it, if I ever purposely put myself in um, more confined areas. Because yeah. I, yeah. Oh, so did, did I intentionally restrict myself ever, basically? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Not really, because mm -hmm. of the options are always there, you know? And the Aquarius is like, I want to, I want to like be free. I want to fly and like, mm -hmm. so just knowing that all these other options are there and being so let's just say low attention span, I rarely ever restricted myself to things. So knowing that this is imposed, it, it was kind of like, now I just have to, and I actually feel a bit better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, exactly. Um, um, something else, another, again, I'm just going to throw out a random fact because I thought that this was so right. cool. I want to hear notes here because it looks really interesting yeah yeah <laughs> all my scribbles it was like a football play yeah. um so the the spin on um the spin that, that people have taken on the ages has also um brought attention to i guess even our attention to the heavens because we didn't realize that the age of aquarius might have already started as of when uranus was discovered Huh. So once Uranus was discovered, which is your planet, um, it caused a little bit of a, a broader realization of space, even the more and more that we continue to explore above us and beyond us. How have you felt now in your personal life when you have gotten into the things that have that you felt? OK, well, I already know all this, but you putting down your old thinking and actually exploring yourself more. Did you like what have what realization did you find like coming to you when you're like, wow, like beyond me, I see other people living different ways. Did that like influence ultimately your move to Prague with just you seeing other mm -hmm. people's paces of life compared to sure. what you were born yeah. into? Yeah, I mean, of course, my planet is Uranus out of out of all of them. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> which is a which is a methane or a gas giant, thus the frogs. <laughs> Oh, and no. and, and known for its crust. So the crustiness, <laughs> it's not a coincidence that you're... <laughs> Farts and crustiness and Uranus, man. That's Photopia. I mean, look, hey, look, I mean, look at the look at the planet behind me. That looks like... <laughs> oh, planet behind me, oh my God. Oh, I'm sweating uh, again. <laughs> well, back to the question, I hope I remember it. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so... Um, when I traveled overseas for the first few times um, was when I really realized that there is not only a way bigger way of viewing the world and how to live, but there was a world that I felt more in place with than in California, where in California, I always felt like I was walking in some sort of bubble like uh, I was in like a little bubble boy and I couldn't actually like I, I never had my feet touch the actual ground. Mm -hmm. 
I first went to Europe, it was like, wait, people are communicating in the way that I naturally communicate. And, you know, there's the aesthetics and all this stuff. I mean, you hear me talk about Europe all the time, but um, that's that was a really mind expanding uh, time period where the first time I even landed in Paris, I just knew that I wanted to go to Europe. At the time, I was like, I just moved to Paris. But um, as I traveled around to more European places, that was like an entire revolution of my mind. Like I, I just completely thought differently ever since those times. Right. So it took for it took further ex- exploration. And it's so then it would say be safe to say there's no coincidence, like you and Richard have brought up before, that things like traveling are an automatic trip, thus the name trip. <laughs> and you actually get to break out of what was known. Just like when we found Uranus, we didn't know we thought that we had known all that were there was to know about the, our galaxy. Right, right. Oh but it, I see. I see. Okay, yeah. So it's like, so now it, it took you actually traveling to get out of your natural thinking that was California and what your family, of course, imposes on you as well and you're growing. But once you begin to explore more, you got to see that there's a different pace of life and you realize that the world was bigger than the experiences that you were already exposed to. So right. I think that now... In these times, it's no coincidence that they are prohibiting how much we move around because it encourages people to cling to. Like, would you imagine, like, where do you think you would be if you would have just clung to California? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As opposed to just finally saying, you know what, this isn't really my vibe. Well, the question is, what? Like, how does that, like, how would that, would it, how are you frozen? I think that. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Oh. You're slightly frozen now. Oh, you switched freezing. Ah, oh, Yoji, I hope you, I hope you're not done. Please, it was getting good. It was getting good. Where are you at? You're frozen. Okay, Yoji, you might have to leave and come back for a second. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Am I back? Am I back? Can you hear me? Back. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Okay. Um, you can hear me though. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So yeah, the question was, uh, where do you think? Where do I think I would be if I stayed in California? Yeah. Fuck. I mean, probably somewhere really dark because the moments leading up to moving was like kind of my last bastion. It was like the last battle of like, if I don't retreat, then I'm going to die on this battlefield. It was it was like I got to go, like I have no other options. I have to go or I could have ended up in a Jake Paul vlog. So maybe I could end up some, some, with Tana Mojo and Trisha Paytas as a silly influencer drama. You might have been friends with Jeffree Star. <laughs> yes, right? So one a, a, a bit of me would have died somewhere. But, uh, <laughs> but that, was, that was like what I had in mind was like, I'm sure I'm in the influencer YouTuber capital of the world. And I played out the best case scenario in LA. Mm-hmm. The best case scenario is that I become really, really successful in Hollywood and I work with Jeffree Star and, (laughs) you know, I go into get into a movie in which the director becomes a predator and then gets canceled. (laughs) Like, this is the best case scenario. And I'm like, fuck this. I would rather live a humble life in Prague and just enjoy myself on the internet and that's it. Like, that, that, that sounds like a way better life than that. Right. Simplicity. Like you're like, okay, well, as long as, but because it's all, as long as it's a narrative that fit your soul as opposed to fit your appearance, because by your appearance, everybody's like, oh, you must be from LA. You must be from, I'm sure that you've gotten that before. You must be from California or some big place, Western place that is yeah, yeah. famous. Yeah. When I just say I'm from LA, people un- completely understand. Like there's so much mystery to this at first. And I say, I'm from Los Angeles. And they're like, oh, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm re- I resent that. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Being being in those two worlds. I mean, coming back to America after my first Euro trip caused a lot of dissonance. That was when the Scorpio Moon was really. It, it felt like a possession. Like the mm-hmm. Scorpio was like stinging. Hey, I got poisoned, and I was like, like you know, Venom from Spider Man. Yes, you know? the symbiote infected you. <laughs> That's what happened. Like a king coming back to America felt like Venom was like the Scorpio Moon just and I got I became like super edgy punk 
emo boy, but like <laughs> the, the distance of knowing that that world where I felt at home is, and then having to come back and stay into a place with bad soil, I guess, mm -hmm. what, caused a lot of tension in, in my own head. Right. And see, so that would, in, in, again, in keeping with the theme of, of Aquarius um, and the fact that it's the sign the, that is right before Pisces, I think that there is a little bit of both in each sign that makes it so that it that by how we're thinking about our communities, how we're thinking about the environments that we're in, it actually makes us aware of water bearing. It makes us aware of the emotional weight it takes to make it in your current environment versus how much easier it might be if you were to take that water, take your weight, take who you are as a person and put yourself in a different environment that allows you to get in touch with not just your mental space where you're thinking about who you got to be and how you have to perform. And it actually puts you in a place where you can start to follow the callings and the inclinations of your soul. Okay. So instead of you saying, okay, well, I'm going to like, for me, for instance, staying in New York, okay, I can stay in New York my whole life and it'll be fine. But what I often get when I speak with, to people is you don't think like a Bronx person. Or you don't think like a, I've I've gotten it before, not often, but I've gotten all. I, you don't think the way that I would think someone from the Bronx would think. Yeah. And there is an assumption that is made when you hear where someone is from. Yes. But then you also realize, wait, how are you the way that you are growing up where you are? When I found that you were from LA, I'm like, LA makes people like him. Yeah. How? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. No, totally. <laughs> mm hmm. And so. In this age, um, I personally would say, and I would hope that you would share as well, like what you would hope to see, but I would hope that people start to understand that your environment does very much influence how much of your soul's expression you get to make because you're so busy thinking about how you have to be. You don't get to actually say, wait a minute, I'm so busy thinking about how I have to be that I'm not being. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm playing the role that has been assigned to me by my parents, by society, by where I live, by yeah, my religious you background. Mm -hmm. You don't really start seeing the potential of who you can be until those influences aren't there anymore. Yes, because even though those are your natural surroundings where you might be familiar, familiarity and what you know can actually become your own prison. Right, right. Where I think a lot of people unconsciously, when they are in groups with other people, you grow up in a place, you unconsciously start just acting out the role that people have assigned to you. And you don't realize you're doing it. And I think that's what's so powerful when you start traveling solo, not with with your friends, but alone, because you have to live life without any of those roles at all which is, can, can be really scary at first, but it's probably the most liberating thing anybody could ever do. Exactly, exactly. And and you have, been, you have embodied that and you show that and there are not a lot of other influences that are actually proving the opposite as well because you pointed out the instance where the influences who were in Bali got put out because they were being what? It's, it wasn't about them being women of color in another country. It's about you having the American narrative yes. and trying to take it and impose it in another country, being right. insensitive to the natives of that country. Right. Yes. And so like, how, how do you feel there in Prague? Do you feel that, that the West has been able to like, is, is subtly starting to creep in or do yeah. you feel that they're actually being really good with holding back other narratives, all the cultural narratives to preserve the people there. It, it's seeping in a bit because it's uh, Central Europe and it borders Western Europe. And Western Europe is very, very westernized. Mm -hmm. And so you can see elements coming in with maybe more money, economic capitalist things. You know, you get businesses and stuff like that. Maybe with some of the younger generation from what they see on social media starts implementing more Western ideas here and there too. Mm -hmm. But I think the history is still fresh from even the last few decades here that it's 
still fairly uncontaminated, I guess. Like, <laughs> as long as I can just talk to people and be straightforward and not like have to deal like, uh, I was thinking like, you look amazing, but I don't really like you, but I'll tell you about that like later. Time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you you look hot because that's what we all say. Right? <laughs> yeah, as long as it just doesn't influence everyday communication and just the honesty that's already out here. When when that happens, that's when I'll know. It's like, ooh, this is not a good, mm -hmm. not a good situation. And have have you the feeling that you have there in Prague? Like, do you do you do you feel that this is something that can be created elsewhere by people? Kind of maybe like again, if they finally ever lift these stupid lockdown things and let us travel again, do you feel like that like yin cultures can maybe finally get maybe start to yang a little bit and people go back to where they're from, like, hey, look at what I experienced. And do you think that might help or ch help further change conditions if we start moving around again in light of all that we've seen what happened from the lockdown? <laughs> I'm glad you asked because <laughs> I really am wanting to create like an entire VR digital space, <laughs> like start a completely different world and like a city itself on in the on the internet, whether it be through VR or a little app or something like that, to kind of allow that type of communication to happen. But I mean, in terms of like real life, you know, normal three dimensional meat suit space, um, <laughs> I think that you know you'll have one side of people like everybody here that will really learn and gain a lot and then travel and go about to see these things and take it very positively. And we can't deny that the other side are just going to double down on their animalistic natures. You know, it's just complete debauchery, like just pure hedonism, fall of Rome type of thing going on. So it really depends. But I will say it just will bring out whatever that person has in 10 times more. Mm -hmm. So like, so you kind of feel that maybe this is these whole lockdowns or maybe even incubation period because what, how we're birthed, how we rebirth ourselves to your Scorpio moon <laughs> after all of this is going to determine a lot about how society is set up. And I'm a, a time I'm a little leery, but I am a little hopeful that maybe because we're realizing in these lockdowns, how much of our environment is impact, impacting our feelings like we've had enough time to think. We have had plenty of time to deliberate. You have these conversations where you host them, Richard hosts them, you host things together, where we are actually asking people, how much are you owning the way that you're thinking? Because how you're thinking mm -hmm. is maybe not showing up in the world because you also are denying in your thought, you're denying that your feelings are being impacted. So it's like the separation of the two, like trying to continue to think and think and think. No, how does all this maybe make us feel? Like right. how do you, as, as someone who thinks a lot, like you found a way to express yourself the way that you do because of how not being able to express yourself made you feel. Yes. So we're talking about the age of Aquarius and my Aquarius son, but this element is all scorpio moon territory which is like the most intensive emo dark sign to have your moon placement in right as a pisces so, moon salute water sign yeah. moons <laughs> there it is so uh that that's a side that i've always had conflict with i mean it's the sign that's just purely conflict as well mm -hmm. so i mean obviously growing up i just had really terrible ways of interacting with it i mean like I didn't really come to terms with that side of me until 18, 19. And all that like repressed anger and craziness was just like a floodgate. Just like, <laughs> just, like con conflict, drama, intensive, like tsunami of feelings. <laughs> like rah, the whole, you know, rock star buffet sort of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, music and stuff and that's kind of where i figured out that's the only place it really belongs healthily in, mm -hmm. in art and, and stuff like that and um nowadays it's not as intensive i've learned other ways to deal with it but um i've accepted that i just have a really combative like 
conflict ridden side with uh, the aries rising is the warrior too plus the scorpio moon like i mean that dude's gonna fucking fight something double right? mars influences yes yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> i get the yeah. angst i get it <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see the 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 mood switching of like all fun and games um absurdist humorous clown aquarius revolutionary hu like everybody is on the same and then just immediately switches but i'm gonna fuck them up <laughs> <laughs> this guy up and this guy up you know or so, i want to be alone right? or, <laughs> leave, leave me alone that's the healthiest way that i've dealt with that just mm -hmm. i just have to isolate myself so no one is in the wake of the aggression that comes out of the scorpio <laughs> And stuff like that, <laughs> but that all gets saved up for the music and this the whole diss track thing that I've made and all that stuff is like where it all comes out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, that's where Lil Clint comes out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Lil Clint. Lil Clint is the is like the pure subconscious id in Scorpio. <laughs> Right, and very well expressed. Very well expressed. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, another another concept that came um that came up while we were having a discussion about brainstorming all this is the idea that oh, and this is so difficult because even I'm trying to understand it, I had to look more into the theory because it is actually an it's an architectural theory, but I see it in music, and since we're touching yeah. on music, I think that it would work. Sure. So. I understand that, like, we have the idea of fliptopia slash utopia, mm -hmm. um, and I guess we'll, and which, in, as you and Richard have pointed out, actually means nothing. It means nowhere. Yeah. And then there's the idea of dystopia, which, mm -hmm. in from what I got or what I understood of the area, is like uh, just simply a, a destructive or de degenerate um, society or de degenerate space. But then there's also uh, a concept that was presented called Notopia. Okay. And the idea of Notopia is architecturally that there's less of an imaginative slant on things. Like imagine going to a painting and you see all paintings, although they're different, in the same colors. You kind of be like, yeah, eh, that doesn't necessarily work. Yes. Like it, it seems like it's beautiful, but why do they all look the same yeah yeah so do you see so in music now and now even in how we are being as people do you notice that like kind of like we're all and we've been we mentioned it before we're all kind of getting into a space where because people are afraid of different because people are afraid of being different everyone is working on trying to be the same yes that's yes completely i i do see that a hundred percent i think most of it is due to just the influence of art being a sales product now you know music and everything is just business and a lot of these people just want to make something that makes money and views which you know you can't you can't uh completely reject that idea but it's when everybody wants to purchase and pay attention to the same thing that these artists and creators want to make the same thing to get eyeballs onto the same thing. So now, I mean, meme culture is what the internet is founded on. And a lot of these songs and whatever else is made on the idea of a meme. It's, it's more of like what gets the most amount of eyes or AKA money. And it's all determined by trends at the time. So whatever that trend is, everyone's going to do that thing to try to get, whatever clout that they want from it and mm -hmm. uh, yeah i do see a flattening of creativity due to this reason and uh on, <clears throat> on my platform and my content i definitely have been guilty of this because i mean everybody needs to build like their own platform somewhere right. but what's amazing is that having the main channel and just having that be like a job and then having Fliptopia for hanging out and having fun. And also thanks for allowing me to live my life, it, helping me financially. Like, dude, the, the amount of donations that I've gotten from you, uh, thank you, UG. Like I should probably help you out sometime. Like, my God, <laughs> you know, like, everybody here at Fliptopia has allowed me to make art completely uninfluenced by what you would say commerce. Like I can be truly creative in exactly the way that I would like it to be in my real creative work. 
where mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about following some trend. I don't have to worry about fl flattening my art because I want other eyes on it. Yes. You know, it's actually given me a lot of creative freedom just having Flipptopia. Absolutely. So just the ability to just the ability for you to actually create from a space untouched or yeah. untainted by the expectation that you're going to fit a cookie cutter has allowed you to create, in my opinion, do some really great art. When I first heard you, I was like, oh, impressive. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> and then sure. the more and more that I listen to your to your to your work and listen to how you've lived your life so far with dance and with all the other creative outlets that you've had, it has allowed you to again not just become flattened artistically, but in your expression of who you are. But you, but you moved in order for you to have to do that. So for us here, Westerners, um, I feel that we are maybe we are approaching this no topic space where life is like negating itself. Mm, like we're moving really into this degenerative mindset because yeah, like, life like can't thrive. Said. Mm -hmm. When there's a painting and all of it is painted red, you can't see the people in the foreground. You can't see the mountains in the back. You can't see the thing where everything, if it's flat on a painting in the same color, it's the what makes a painting a painting is the lines that the contrasts and all that other stuff. So, so we are. So it is needed, right? So, this, so in in light of that, we are. If we can, if we continue to move down this path, like. Do you kind of feel like a little bit afraid or a little leery that like mankind is moving into a direction where because of panic, because of fear, we're allowing ourselves to move into a space where it's bound to become hmm. soul killing. It will yeah. function to it will function sterilely, but it won't help people's spirit. And right now we're seeing people harming hmm. themselves and doing all this stuff because nothing is filling their spirit. I think I can be a very cynical person at times when I'm isolated with only my Scorpio moon. I'm very cynical. Mm -hmm. But uh, every time that I do these live streams and I talk to people like you, you know, and Richard and everybody here, it reminds me of the the purity and the potential that a good amount of people do have. And it's always a refresher every single time where I would like to say the world's going to shit or everyone's going to blow each other up and, blah, blah, blah. and it's definitely a possibility and uh in masses to see that um with the last year and so or so it really disillusioned me but as i come back to these things here i'm like well maybe it's not my position to worry about the entire population of the globe but knowing that there's still a good amount of people in a small community that has pure positive intentions and still can uh, celebrate each other's presence in a positive way. And if that's all I see in my world, well, then why does it, you know, why does it matter to look that far further out to just bum me out further, you know? Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking about it, so it's instead of being short sighted, and thinking, well, people just suck now, and I'm not yeah. even going to worry about the future. I'm just not even going to deal with anybody now. Which Aquarians, at times, uh, a, a negative trait of Aquarians is that they can disassociate very easily. They can be very detached from feeling and detached from really wanting to explain things to people because, as aliens, um, they figure that no one will understand them. Right. So then. Instead of you thinking that far out, you're like, well, look, today I was I, I was around good people, and then you and you just live in that moment. So living in the moment now, that's helped you. It sounds like it to not just think, well, existentially, you know, life just sucks. People people just suck. <laughs> sure, it's it's yeah, it's kind of um, as much as I enjoy viewing things very widely. Some narrowing has really helped. For example, like. I'm not just trying to pander to the you know PR extra and Flipptopia, but when I narrow my focus on certain things that I know that it provides me real fulfillment and joy, like the streaming and the VR thing, that becomes most of my world, which in the end becomes a sort of overall potential. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? 
it does. It does. Like you so you're saying like so because because you're narrowing your focus, you're not painting a singular moment as an existential condition. Yes. Like if you have a bad day, all of the world just sucks. You're like, right. nah, it's a bad moment. All right, F it. Move on. Yeah, it's like I, I'm not completely isolating myself to only good news. I, I, I'm constantly following what's happening with you know social political podcasts just to see what's going on. But knowing that there is a, a narrow niche in my life where I know that it's pure positivity and wholesomeness, perhaps that's something to actually really take uh, not for granted, to really focus on that. Because if that exists, then maybe it's not all just fucking shit and everything the world's going to burn if if that's still able to exist somewhere exactly right so the, yeah so like so by you narrowing your focus it does give you like more of an appreciation it helps you connect to the people that are available to you the people that can understand you the people that can empathize and understand and give you feedback so that you're if you want to be aware of reality but still remain positive you created that like you broke it out of a bubble to create the bubble that still allowed you to be in touch with the world. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as we're bringing this up, I'm I'm reflecting on a few things that I'm realizing right now. Like maybe it was unconscious and semi-conscious, but because I can't meet up with people just randomly all the time in the FOMO with every option ever, I've had to really choose how much time and who I do spend my time with, which means that these people have a more meaningful, valuable part. And, you know, this stream is a huge element of that as well, where now with all the world collapsing on itself or whatever, I look at my everyday life and I'm looking at the relationships that I'm building with people, Richard, you, Ian, uh, oh, the producer, yeah, Nikki. Nikki, you mm -hmm. know, like, wait a minute. Those are really valuable, healthy relationships. Everybody on the stream too. Mm -hmm. And if that's my physical relationships with people, then how was that? How was the external craziness of the collapse of all that shit? Like, I still am able to live my day-to-day -day life with even healthier relationships that I did before, where before you have such a grand scheme of like all these options and getting these terrible Tinder dates with people I barely know. And then this drama happens with somebody that doesn't even have my best intentions. You like, need to call so, me a cab. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like Sorry. now, right. With all those options, I'm like hanging out with people I shouldn't have hung out with and just waste my time and energy and all these things where Technically, the whole world wasn't collapsing, but my everyday life was because of all the life. Life, you know. <laughs> That's facts. That's facts. <laughs> my Aquarian twelfth house felt that. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I felt that a, a couple of times. Like, yeah, like you have to. It like it's like it's weird because like you zoom out and you're like, okay. General conditions are kind of crazy, but then you yeah. zoom back in and you're like, but nah, but my life is actually not that terrible. Right, right. <laughs> that, dissonance of like, you hear more bad news with the whatever, the pandemic or whatever, but on my everyday life, this is the best it's ever been. You know, I have the ability to talk to you and everybody here. I have other people that you guys all know and they're great people and you are friendly with them too. So I'm like, wait a minute. Was my life actually like worse before or like, is it better now? Because of, and, and then, I oh know I'm still like kind of juggling Working that. it out. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I felt that too. I've been, I can, I can relate. I think that a lot of people are coming to the realization now that maybe it's that, okay, we had to step away from one another to actually realize that, Hey, while I was around the people that were nearest and dearest to me, I kind of maybe have all that I need. Like right. I can, I can build on what I have yes. because I have the essentials. Yes. I guess was moving at a pace where I couldn't appreciate the essentials. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Damn. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, you got anything more on the notepad or? <laughs> um. So I guess the only other thing that I can say is that, um, 
I am looking forward to what you're continuing to do with Richard because my last reference to the to tree, the tree of life is that your pathway on the tree of life, the one that, because there's a couple of different renditions of it, but the one that Alistair Crowley put together, there are like 18 different branches. On your branch, there's like a concept where your sign, the, Aqua- the sign of Aquarius that's associated with the branch actually hooks the the end point of that branch, which is a Piscean principle, which is, I think I found it so funny because I'm like, so then it's it was kind of faded that you and Richard got, you know, got together and started to collaborate in, in your works because it's like you have brought Richard to a point from what I've seen of him where he is not really, he never maybe was before, but now he's like even more so like open with saying, you have to do you because I'm going to do me. Mm-hmm. I'm me. <laughs> we yeah. don't worry about what I'm doing. How yeah. are you feeling and thinking about what you're doing? <laughs> yes. And yes. you're now like, you know what? I like being creative and I like being able to dibble and dabble and everything. But maybe I could use a little more structure yeah. to help me figure out what I have right now. So what I have right now, doesn't seem overwhelming. It's something where I'm, I appreciate it. Sure. You know, it's funny because uh, Richard is a Pisces. So mm-hmm. like going from his age to my age now, but like you, you do see a, a smaller analogy of um, how these different worldviews are shifting right now too, where um, I learned boundaries from him. I watched his videos to figure out what the fuck it means to not be, Fuck it all the time. <laughs> right. And, Why let know, people run all over you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's that, it's setting up for myself and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, what he learned from me is to just kind of let loose a bit more and adapt new uh, ideas. Like he got the VR set before I did. You know, I'm like, I, <laughs> you know, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like the, there's there's a shift there where he's, you know, a very disciplined, rigorous person. And there, are, I think I've shown him how to kind of like, adapts new modalities of being in, in the time period we live now because it's all fucking digital and f- flipped like that's the flip lord is like right, that's the flip right there. <laughs> that's what it be- that's what flip became though the flip lord is now like the the ideas of the world flipping on itself it's an inversion a little bit yeah so like in like old pierre before all this was like you know what yes yeah, like again yeah, sex drugs and rock and roll and now it's like you know what sex drugs and rock and roll was fun but I got some other stuff that I like to do too. That's still fun. Yes. And there's a lot of fun stuff that I have in store Come as well. <laughs> UG Rose, thank you for being a part of this and joining us here on Fliptopia. And I, I hope so. this won't be the last time because it's always like every time I talk to you, there's always a few breakthroughs. So like, thank you for, for showing up today. Thank you so much, Boo, for having me. Um, shout out to so I was talking to Perla because Perla was was handling some was just we just talking and she I was talking about what she did with Let Me Explain. Fantastic video. Please continue to do what you're doing. Shout out to Perla, shout out to Sharp Boy, shout out to all the old ladies and the gentlemen doing their editing thing, doing their sound things, doing their music thing. Shout out to Poe, Picky, Richard. Um yeah, the Pam, all the mods, all of my lady mods, <laughs> and my and my my baby, who's also an Aquarius, whose her B day is coming. Ooh, you got yeah. a lot coming to you. <laughs> exactly. Up. Yep, and um, and um, I guess then that's it. But I only to you know be out by saying happy birthday to oh. ya, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday. <laughs> oh. You got a voice, Yuji. Maybe you should hop on one of these tracks sometime soon. Oh, yeah, I'm right. I'm right in music. You'll hear a Yo, little bit of shum shum. Got the microphone now. That's a new mic, right? You already done. <laughs> Guys, find Yuji Rose on YouTube, and uh, yes, I will hopefully see you at the party for a bit. Yep, and, I'll uh, be in the chat. Yep, give me a second to unplug and put my hair back in rollers because you see my curls is flopping. <laughs> And of course, I have to go pee as well. But <laughs> right, go ahead. Yes, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna close you out now, so I don't accidentally hang up on you. But thanks. No for problem. Flipptopia, bang bang, gang hey. gang. <laughs> Guys, UG Rose, everybody. Oh my god, that was so that was amazing. God damn. 
holy shit. So now I have to do what I'm really good at. And that is going pee. Does anybody want to watch? I'm sure you do. Come along, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, guys, I'm going to have the birthday party live stream directly after this. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to go take a pee pee and a pee poopy. And then we're going to have a good time. Crackhead hour. Let's get it. All right. So see you guys in about five minutes. Thanks for joining me and UG Rose for the age of Aquarius. But then, though.